Today we're discussing the latest on SpaceX's planned 2026 IPO, one of the most anticipated in history, with a current private valuation of around $800 billion and targets up to $1.5 trillion. The offering is fueled by Starlink's explosive growth, Starship advancements and bold plans for orbital AI data centres. The reality of humans and humanoids out there amongst the stars is getting closer by the day. With me to discuss is Graham Cobb. Thanks for being here, mate. You're welcome. After we've just uh, arrived at Cambridge Tesla showroom, yeah. got ourselves a coffee. Yeah. What better place to record a video? Exactly. <laughs> so this has been news uh, in the past week, all coming together. Brilliant. The synergy of Tesla and uh, SpaceX companies coming together beautifully. Yeah. What are your initial thoughts about the IPO from the point of view of Tesla shareholders? We'll get to the the details of the whole thing in a minute. But yeah. What are you thinking about? The shareholders. I think I think if it if it's favouring shareholders as Elon Musk has suggested, I mean, what an opportunity, really. Mm. I mean, you you're investing, I think, as uh, someone put it, in in a galaxy. <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, what what kind of opportunity is there's has ever presented itself where you can invest like that before? This is sci-fi again, coming reality, isn't it? What what's being discussed? What with SpaceX? What they're proposing to do? And it's a convergence of his companies again. So, you know, I think it's going to be incredible. I, you know, I'm, I am I still watch rockets landing and it still blows me away all these years later. Exactly. Yeah. And, and to yeah. think that there's going to be so much other stuff going on yeah. that's completely mind-blowing. What an opportunity to invest, though. If you're a Tesla shareholder and you, and you get that favourably, wow. Yeah. Why does SpaceX need to go public? That's, that's one of the questions, isn't it? It doesn't exactly need to. It's obviously a private company and yeah. Elon... You know, Elon's wealth, supposedly, you know, he's always said that he's going to use it to fund missions yeah. to Mars. Um, you know, if he does have a spare trill, you know, he might. <laughs> There's the close. Mars mission, yeah. done. But this would raise $30 billion, um, which would likely be handy to fuel capital-intensive projects like rapidly scaling Starship flights, building orbital AI data centres, which is insane, but that's just yeah. a, a new thing that's come out of nowhere that seems to be absolutely genius, which we'll wow. touch on in a minute, and expanding um, space infrastructure while also providing liquidity for employments and investors. Alternative Jones writes on X, this is what will make SpaceX the world's first $100 trillion company. Replying to Elon Musk's post, giant lunar base with AI satellite factories and a mass <laughs> driver to shoot them into deep space. <laughs> I mean, how yeah. deep do you want to go here, Graham? I mean, we're talking... Um, I don't think my brain can really <laughs> comprehend those words in, in a sentence, to be quite honest with you. Well, yeah. It's just incredible, yeah. isn't it? And the, the, the very idea that, that SpaceX could start an industry, you know, in collaboration with Tesla, of course, with chip fabs yeah. and the you know the AI data centers and everything, that could also be worth just $100 trillion, the same amount that the entire globe produces at the moment of right. GDP yeah. could then be expanded into space and Elon agrees. He's like, yeah, that, th that seems about right yeah. because you've got an endless opportunity in space. Thinking about the data centers like in space, when you think about the, the intense energy that's consumed on Earth for data centers, the amount of heat that's produced, the amount of cooling it needs, and the fact that some of these data centers are in uh, very cold countries to start with to reduce those bills, he's like, mm. well, we could probably like power it for free and don't yeah. have to worry about the cooling. So you could power it for free for 24 hours a day and yeah. continuously work. It's It gets its cooling because it's in space. You don't yeah. need the water. You don't need to, to cool the systems. You just need to get them up there <laughs> affordably, set them in motion to just orbit, if any, and then you're off. If only you had a company that could do that. Yeah. It's bonkers, <laughs> isn't it? I mean, how many can you fit in, a, in each starship yeah. and take them up? And, you know, I wonder that the maths of, of the equation of by the time you've got like, I don't know, a, a thousand of them, a hundred thousand in space, what's the equivalent cost that it would have cost on Earth? Well, there's going to be a yeah. great difference there, isn't there? That's yeah. what's going to make this grow into an enormous opportunity yeah. for, for, you know, for the cost of it and the productivity of it. And there's no other, there's no other company on Earth that can do this. I know. Just I, SpaceX. And you think you've got like a constellation of uh, low Earth orbit satellites providing internet connection yeah it's like yeah just to, just to pass yeah, on the, just the to data pass on the date and it's like <laughs> I, it's insane so looking at what the funds would, would be used for that initial uh, 30 billion dollars that they're looking to to raise mainly for rapid starship development achieving an insane flight rate for frequent launches 
cost reductions and enabling Mars missions, of course. It would be also used for the orbital AI data centers, so building and deploying satellites equipped with AI chips for space-based computing. That gives low latency and solar-powered processing, including purchasing all the hardware required as well. And thirdly, just broader space infrastructure, so supporting Starlink expansion, heavy payload capabilities, and long-term goals like uncrewed and crewed Mars flights. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. So we are obviously talking about Optimus robots being a massive part of the future of SpaceX's um, plans for the moon, yeah. Mars, oh, space. So yeah. when he was talking about the, the lunar city that sounds like it's going to be shooting AI satellites <laughs> into deep space. Just incredible. You, you, you're going to be talking about Optimus robots being there building that. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It just seems walking the park, doesn't it? I mean, it, when you've solved things like FSD and you know the world's energy problems, yeah. I don't suppose you know a million Optimus on the moon is that far fetched? It's, no, it's again. I've got visions of <laughs> like this landing ship and these arms coming out and dropping these drones onto the lunar lunar surface. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's just yeah. Again, it's 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 sci-fi. But if anyone's going to do this, it's going to be Elon Musk. It's going to be Tesla. It's going to be SpaceX. Yeah, I and mean, yeah. we already know that the there's nothing physical getting in the way of the technology that Tesla and SpaceX have. Yeah, they have the rockets. Yeah. They have the robots. We just yeah. need to see them put the brain of FSD it's... cars into the robots, so they're way more capable of everything. Yeah. And then they'll get into the rockets, and then they will get there. They'll get yeah. to the moon, and then they'll get to the to Mars, just... and then they'll start working. And you know what? They'll probably take a boring machine as well with them, yeah, and send that up. I mean, I think that's perfectly sized, isn't it, to fit into the Starship? Oh, yeah. that was the point. So yeah. you could take it to another planet and start digging. It, yeah. And Optimus would just be it's, putting nice windows and curtains up for by the time humans get there. <laughs> Again, more convergence of his companies, isn't it? And it's just yeah. absolutely incredible. Oh, one more thing: HVAC systems. Oh yeah, you know. Yeah, Tesla have got the one of the best in they the have. world. Yep, they could be dumping cyber trucks on Mars and the Moon with a pressurized system inside yeah. with an oxygen tank in it. Yeah, and you can True. pop a human on it. Go for a drive around the Moon in a cyber truck rather than on your screen in your car. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm quickly thinking about the gravity problems there. That's fine. It would hold a cyber truck down, wouldn't it? Unless you hit a really big bump. Like, oh, damn it! Well, yeah, <laughs> I'm well, going into space. Might be a bit more efficient. Yeah. It'd be very efficient, yeah. 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 No supercharges necessary. No. Right. Yeah, solar power. You exactly. Know. If they can have a lunar base, they're not going to try and dig for oil to then make petroleum to then try and power everything, are they? God, that seems so... Exactly. Yeah. You've got, you got a massive generator in the sky. You've got Tesla that can make solar panels. Tesla that can make robots. Tesla that can make the lunar vehicles, you've got SpaceX that can send up the rockets, all the hardware that's required for your AI data centers. If you're thinking of going to Mars and you need to you need to bore some holes into the ground, you've got the boring company. It's just a massive convergence of all his... It's, yeah. al it's almost like he's planned this 20 years ago. It feels like it, doesn't it? Does, it? Yeah. it feels more like he's an alien than ever, because he yeah. saw this all coming. And, the, you know, to be fair, I've, also, I've seen this coming too. He's, he's said it enough times. We've all yeah. watched the, the SpaceX animations and what they plan to do. It's just, yeah, and now it's coming true. It's yeah. happening. In the same way that Elon is just, you know, brushing off almost. Oh, yeah, we've solved autonomy. Yeah, yeah these, these cars are rolling around. We've done that. Let's move, let's move on to AI satellites in space. I just think everything seems so far-fetched that most people doubt that it could ever happen. Yeah, well, mo most people don't believe things are real until until it's right in their face you know a lot of people don't have the imagination to yeah to think this is possible but as i was, yeah as i just mentioned everything that's that we're talking here is is evident already in tesla's and spacex's sphere yeah, yeah. It's, it's all here it's going to happen it's yeah. just crazy it is crazy it <laughs> is just, crazy yeah. yeah i mean who would have thought just a few years ago tesla would be sending up you know the enormous amounts of starlink satellites enabling the whole globe to get access to the internet yeah. i mean that's humanity changing right there that should be on every headline flipping news program of every day yeah. like wow look at this school in, in the middle of africa that's now got access to the internet thanks to starlink but nope not a bit of it um you, you know the, the next thing will be won't it ai satellites the yeah. data center's been in space and do you think then that 
they're going to have to deploy more Starlink satellites around the moon and into deep space so they can start communicating with yeah, different constellations to and yeah, to and from yeah. and then onwards to Mars and then have this kind of <laughs> imagine going to Mars and you've got like half a terabyte download speed <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that's insane what should we watch on Netflix yeah that's weird <laughs> you're still gonna have that latency issue of being on Mars though for Earth you can't you won't be able to have a uh, conversation with anyone in real time um, yeah. ever well it's which, quite which far is, away yeah it's very far away uh, I can't remember how long the, the delay is but it's, it's not you know, no matter how many Starlinks you've got <laughs> lining the yeah, two together, they're, lassoing they're, them together. They're, they're, yeah, it'd, be, yeah. It'd, it'd probably be similar to going back to the 1940s and phoning up America from your home. Yeah. And you have this kind of delay, oh. don't you? This lag of, of conversation. When I need to work on cruise ships and call home. I'm like, hi, oh. Mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi. <laughs> yeah, nightmare. Um, but yeah. that was just a few seconds of lag. Yes. You know, there's, there's no real way to, to do that on Mars. But, you know, these, these are problems that they'll sort themselves out. I, well, I want, he's probably been thinking about this, though, hasn't he? How, how you can get rid of that latency. Yes, probably. But I don't know how. If you, things can't travel quicker than the speed of light, light. then there's an issue. Yeah. But anyway, let's get anyway, back to... Yeah another massive part of this puzzle which is the terrafab yes um so the idea of being a chip manufacturer as well which tesla's getting into i mean nvidia nvidia have done rather well haven't they oh, um, incredibly well, <laughs> incredibly yeah. well. Yeah. and uh you know tesla could be coming for some of that pie as well with making their own chips for all of their tesla products or yeah. you know, spacex products starlinks everything like that uh, it could be a gigantic business and of course we already own some of that in yeah. Tesla shares. It's perfect. I, I think this is kind of lessons learned as well from uh, COVID, you know, with, with the supply chain issues. Mm. How do you, with, with AI ramping up at the pace it's ramping up now, and you've got big companies building out their own data centers. There's, and, and recently, I think there's ChatGPT has got 40% of all the, all, all the chips, haven't they, or whatever it is. Mm. It's like, how do you mitigate that? We'll build it ourselves. We'll, we'll do that mm. ourselves. And yeah. that, that mitigates all that risk. But not only that, they can build it to their specification, exact specification. Yeah. Um, so it's completely proprietary. <laughs> only, only it'll be better for them because yeah. they can control everything exactly. within it. Just like they've learned, it's like they've learned everything from the car industry by the revolution of electric cars, by just learning every single detail about what, how to rewire yeah. the entire um, you know, industry. They've taken all those lessons and then just applying it to everything else. Is it a good idea to be vertically, vertically integrated and build every component yourself, or at least design every component yourself? Of course it is for yeah. any company. Yeah. This is what SpaceX have been doing this the entire time. That's why the you know, the material that the Cybertruck is made of is the same as Starship. It's exactly the same material. Yeah. It's the same material that's now circling the Tesla diner in yeah. California. Yeah, yeah. It's like the, the I don't know the, the <clears throat> energy between these companies is, is just tremendous to see, isn't it? I mean, it it's, it's incredible. All working yeah. towards it's Mars. It's really incredible, and I think yeah, we, we're starting to see that come coming through now, but. Do you remember that picture of Elon Musk with, uh, on the Tesla Model 3 production line and he's sitting on the floor and he's got yeah. his back to everyone and he's, he's like, you know, how, how am I going to fix all of this? Mm -hmm. I think that was the moment. That, that, was the, that was the pivotal moment, really, that he had to go through to then enable everything else. Because at that point, that's when everything started to come together. That after that, after he's gone through that hell, mm -hmm. after he's gone through that manufacturing hell that he went through, He's like, right, I don't ever want to go through that again. How do we get around all of these different problems and we'll sort it out ahead of time rather than kind of during that manufacturing period? Mm. I think that was the real pivotal turn there. So that's where I think he's now, like, his mind is racing years ahead of everyone else. Yeah. He's got it all mapped out, exactly what's happening, and he's just executing. Yeah. Yeah. You you think the uh, world would be a little more excited about it because we you know in this tiny little niche of people who sort of are excited and you know others looking in like oh, these mental people talking about all this yeah. crazy stuff you know but it's not crazy anymore because it, it, it's real you can yeah. see these rockets taking off yeah you can see the production line is going to be knocking out cybercab soon enough the you know Optimus will start being produced too yeah cars are now driving themselves autonomously on their own around the world how much evidence do people need to realise that the things he is saying things Elon Musk is sharing yeah. is going to come to us yeah. and it's not just for the betterment of humanity it could expand our species amongst the stars 
just that. I mean, uh, you know, deep, but you yeah. know, most people just like, oh, my football team won. Yeah. So, oh my God, could, they, <laughs> you know, could there be anything less interesting? <laughs> yeah. For the for humanity, it's deep, when you zoom out, it's deeply profound, isn't it? It is deeply, it deeply is. profound. But at what point do people actually sit up and stop hating and realizing? what's going on. I think there's a turning point right now. You, I, I, you feel it, I feel it everywhere and I'm noticing other people have mentioned it too. I, you know, when, whilst I've been quietly thinking it, I think the turnaround for people in this country even, recognising that the things Elon Musk have been saying, oh, they all turn out to be true. Yeah. You know, whether you like it or not, whether you like the person shining the spotlight onto the horrific things going on in the UK, people are going, but he's right. Yeah. You know, these things have happened and it's all coming, coming to light now. Yeah. It's, I think just people are slowly waking up and realising they've been lied to and misled about all sorts of things from the media. And one of the big ones is, is Elon Musk, because he owns X. Yeah. Simply because of that. Uh, yeah. You know, he had the, the oil industry hating him in the first place yes. for the disruption caused to it. Yeah. And the billions of dollars that they have lost from, you know, the electrification of the whole industry. I don't know, I just I feel more people are waking up to it. They're, they're spotting that what they're being told are mostly lies. And that what Elon Musk is saying is real concern for all yeah. sorts of things. I think a lot of people would look at his kind of political beliefs now and attribute that to, say, Donald Trump or the Republican Party and will just automatically just turn off to anything that he's saying. Yeah. But, you know, at what point would even the left-wing media then sit up and think, hang on a minute, he's doing something really quite profound and amazing. This this is what's very fun to watch right now because you're noticing those same far-left liberals having to sort of swallow their pride and going, oh, FSD's working really well now. Autonomy's yeah. really good. Oh, maybe these robots will work after all. Yes. You know, maybe yeah. what Elon's doing around the world with Starlink, giving access to the internet for the whole flipping planet, is a good thing. Yeah. Maybe cheap, affordable space travel and, you know, getting off this planet and start, you know, that do a rub of a planet Mars yeah. is not a bad idea after all. It's yeah. just people have been, in my frustration, people have been very slow to understand how bold these plans are and now they're very realistic but it's it's kind of almost disappointing that all of these points are happening but it's just not being covered in the mainstream that well i don't suppose they can though in the same sort of way because they'd probably just lose their audience of people that they've already created that they've told that elon's the bad guy yeah how can they just suddenly go oh actually he's good but i'm noticing that is true i think it was the new york times last week yeah posted something really positive i'm like what the hell wall street journal Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. Times are changing. Yeah, and we're, we're hearing positivity from all sorts of folks who have been previously, let's just say, they've definitely caught Elon derangement syndrome. Yeah. Minds are changing, is what I'm feeling. That's yeah. a good thing. Yeah. Because the whole work, you know, we all need, need to come together and realise we're all on the same flipping yeah. team here. We're on team humanity. We want things to be better for the yeah. future. Um, this company is solely taking care of so much of that. <laughs> so, oh, it's, I mean, it's incredible. And it's not even government-led, is it? That's the thing. It's it's led by an individual. One individual. Yeah. and But this is what government should have been doing. Yeah. But All along. But they've yeah. been, been crushed by but regulation. Been, and, and fixing potholes. Yeah. Yeah. Not even. Or not even not doing even that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, one thing's for sure. The future's going to be pretty exciting. Yeah. Let's uh, see what happens. Yeah. But just to, to make things even more exciting. One sweet. Oh, I've some Christmas sweets, and they <laughs> need eating because we've got too many of them. So yeah. you know, yeah, Merry Christmas. That's that's the Thank you very payment much. for today. Thank Thanks. you. <laughs> right. Thanks everyone. I'm Will. This is the Tesla Jigsaw. Thank you, patrons. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.